I think it's a great pity that uh, we are putting up buildings for activities which have only been with us for 20 or 30 years, like computer centers and things like that, and yet we are incarcerating them in pyramids. Architect Cedric Price isn't sure we need our tower blocks that long. Unless the buildings are such that on the one hand they are, they are of sufficient delight while they are used to justify their cost, and on the other hand they are sufficiently capable to be removed without too much nuisance to the others, the other people outside prior to their replacement with something else, then we shouldn't do it. Then we have to question the future of cities. And it could well be that society doesn't require this sort of uh, concrete box cube of offices. In 20 years' time, we might be wanting completely different sort of buildings. I would say it's a fair guess that most of the buildings being built today will be down again within 40 years. But it wouldn't surprise me if it was 20 years. Now, if you build just a barn, I agree there may be lots of other things that you can do in it. Internal flexibility. But it may well be in the wrong place. What do you think of demolition contractors, generally? I, I, I find, I, I, I'm delighted by them because I love the idea of, of buildings going down. I, I stand and watch buildings collapsing. I think they're a superb set of, of socially healthy rogues. You see, a lot of demolition contractors don't say very kind things about architects. They don't think they've been considered at all by the architect. Demolition contractors are quite right to, to grumble about the architects. And I'd like to make clear I am not speaking here for my profession, most of whom I think are as derelict as some of the buildings we have to pull down. Um, however, the nice, uh, nice meaning accurate thing about the demolition contractors is they, they are at the moment investigating um, a training scheme for demolition contractors and architectural students on the entire problems of demolition. What one must realize is that as short a period ago as 1920, there was far more um, retrieval and resale of rubbish from a demolition job than there is now. There was far more recycling. That's the word, the smart word. They sold dust for making bricks. They sold wood for, for domestic winter fuel and the rest. There's far more scrapping now with no reuse and therefore the whole process, largely due to the uh, time problem, is becoming noisier, dirtier, and more dangerous. It's only now that the contractors are waking up to the scale of the problem and thinking about the legacies the construction industry is leaving behind for them. The demolition industry spokesman, Peter Griffiths. You see, there's a school of thought that says that the foundations are so tough in buildings like that that they, they might as well stay there. Yep, yeah, I've heard it, and uh, they could be right. Uh, they've also said, of course, that um, the same about the, the building, the rest of the building, that um, whatever height it is, uh, it's going to cost so much to bring down that the building owner may decide to uh, leave it there forever. I couldn't tell you, and I, I, I in fact, deny anybody to say to you they know exactly how to take that building down. Because you've got a building like that. Next door to it, you've got another building which looks similar, but may be of a completely different construction. So one of the first things we're asking, and we're asking this, that of these new buildings going up, it is of prime importance that the drawings in the construction of these buildings are logged for permanent uh, preservation until the life of that building comes to an end. Who would log them, Mr. Griffiths? Well, this is the, uh, one of the uh, points the committee's got to take up. It can be a central office, or it can be in conjunction with the various local authorities all over the country. But log they must be. I personally think that in relation to large pre-stress concrete structures, that if they're standard pre-stress, that is every member is like that, there should be information lodged, say, with the local authority or with the 
National Federation of Demolition Contractors, or whatever they're called, but some central group, uh, because clients change, even in 20 years, certainly in 60 years. What, what you want there is information on what is in the building in terms of reinforcement, position, details of connections, what has been welded, and so on. Uh, and some idea of the design calculations so that people know that if they remove a certain bit, uh, whether the rest of it is strong enough to support itself. I think that's about as far as one can go just now, uh, as far as information is concerned, particularly that we're talking about demolition uh, 30 years hence, and the techniques of demolition are just being developed, so we don't really know what technique is going to be used when it comes to taking it down. If it is a very peculiar construction, and here it doesn't necessarily have to be concrete, but if it is a bridge construction of some sort, then I personally think that uh, some agencies, such as the Department of the Environment, should have information lodged with them as to the safe and rapid means of demolition. And this should be a statutory requirement. But the information is there at the time of design it's only a question of a threatening step. Unless today's tower blocks are to become tomorrow's mausoleums, two things must happen. A record's got to be kept of how they were built, and the designer has to plan for demolition. But there's still a shortage of fast, safe, and effective methods of getting rid of concrete. It took a hundred years to get a national theatre. Will others still want it there in 500 years? Well, now, you're an architect who's thought about demolition. Mm. Do you have any ideas of your own for demolition? One that I am particularly interested in is building, uh, bringing buildings down by, by vacuum, by putting a great um, cover, uh, a hood, over a building and taking the air out and letting atmospheric pressure destroy it. This has one has several advantages. One is that you contain the muck and the dust. Two is that you re reduce the noise danger. Three, so it's more than three advantages. Three is you reduce the physical danger of bits falling off into the road. And um, four, you have control at the rate you pull it down, depending on how much air you take out. But aren't you still going to run into the problem of high-tension beams? I think, once again, the post-tension or pre-stress beams have to be handled separately. I think those have probably got to be destroyed first. Yes, quite definitely. To, to round this off, in a way, I think there should be a very uh, extensive and probably national investigation into how you get rid of pretensioned structures <coughs> that have a major support condition. I think this should be done now. I think it should have been done five years ago. I'm sure the demolition contractors would welcome it. And I, in fact, if the population knew the possible risk that is being run by no one quite knowing how to, dis how to uh, demolish these structures, they would support this. Now, this is where one looks to an agency like the DOE for initiating such research now. I have spoken from my experience. It's not sufficient. We must try those out. Those are the major um, pretension structures. Not small sections, but the big ones of which we have an increasing number, both in civil engineering, bridges and tunnels and things like that, as well as normal structures, tower blocks.